Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When the king sends you to represent him, his reputation is invested upon you. That means when you live a life that does not bear fruit, when you live a life that does not produce results, it's an indictment on the integrity of the one who sent you. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? And they said nothing. There are many people who claim to be sent by Jesus. I'm not just talking in ministry. The average believer from a kingdom dimension believes he's an advocate, not just of righteousness, but of the kingdom. And that is true. The Bible says so. The Bible calls us ambassadors. And in the verse we just read, it calls us salt. It calls us light. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it calls us witnesses. If it is true that we are light, we are salt, we are ambassadors, we are witnesses, then it means that the reputation of the king must have been invested in my life and your life. It means we do not just come to Pharaoh and tell him I met the God of the Hebrews and he said let my people go. Pharaoh will not let the people go because of that grammar. You must bring before you a testament that shows you really met the king. Are we together? This is why results are very powerful. They are very powerful because they, they give credence to the fact that you were truly sent by God. Are we together now? Paul, a man approved of God. There are corresponding apostolic signs. Many believers do not know why we don't command the kind of kingdom influence. Now in leadership, and, and thank God for the kind of church that I'm ministering in. You're not ignorant in this area at all. But in leadership, we teach that there are several cadres as far as influence is concerned. And there is a cadre in leadership where the influence that you exert upon people is at the instance of the excellency of the results that you command. Are we together now? Yes, there are dimensions of the influence that comes because of the title, the office that you hold. So people do not respect you just because they love you. They honor the office that you occupy. Then there is a dimension of leadership that is because of the excellency of your character. Are we together now? They love you because of a disposition of moral excellence. But there is a dimension of influence and leadership that happens at the instance of results that when you are bankrupt of results and you cannot lead that organization to provide provable results nobody is going to be loyal to you this is the kind of world we have found ourselves so it's not enough to say jesus heals jesus saves jesus lifts he has sent me he said blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord the word bless means empowered to produce results so when you say i come in the name of the lord people don't just say amen you are welcome they watch for the signs of authenticity when you buy a product that claims it came from a company there are certain seals and certain codes around that product is that true that helps you to distinguish the real from the fake say perhaps it's a toothpaste they will even advertise that when you buy toothpaste from us check you will see something maybe a, a silver label or something like that so when you say you have been sent from god there must be attesting signs and tonight this meeting is not just a miracle service to heal and pray for the sick but it's largely an impartation service that for God's sake something will rest upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ shouting and saying I'm from God is not how it is done your results are evangelists hear me there is a sermon only your results can preach you are not the only one who was supposed to be an evangelist. Your results are also evangelists. And there is an audience that only your results can preach to. If you are the only one doing evangelism yourself and your results are silent, you are not preaching well. Both you and your results should preach. When Moses came and met Pharaoh, 
he spoke once and the rods continued to speak him. Are we together? Yes. This, this is the same strategy that the secular world has used to enslave believers. They don't talk so loud, but my goodness, their results are ever speaking. From one dimension and one level of success, we criticize them, but we are still slaves to them. Are we together? Yes. Let me show you a few scriptures. In Matthew chapter 8, from verse 23 to 27, I want to show you the kind, the portrait of what God desires for you to become. If it is true that you are one with Christ, and if it is true that you are sent as an ambassador by the king. Matthew 8, we'll begin our reading from verse 23. The Bible says, and when he, the he being Jesus, was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. 24, reading to 27. And behold, the Bible says, there arose a great tempest in the sea in so much that the ship was covered with the waves but he was asleep 25 and his disciples came to him and awoke him saying lord save us we perish and he said unto them why are ye fearful O ye of little faith i love jesus and then he arose this is what it means to be light this is what it means to be salt it's not to join in the lamentation when those who are not light are afraid and confused, they run to you. And when they run to you, it, it takes more than sympathy. Jesus encouraged them, but he turned and the Bible says he rebuked the winds and the sea. Help me. And there was great results. And there was great results. You can call it anything. But the fact that he took action and there was results that the disciples could see. The next verse, please. The Bible says, but the men marveled, saying, what manner of pastor is this? What manner of businessman is this? What manner of entrepreneur is this? We've seen other kinds, but what manner of man is this? That even the business world obey him. What manner of preacher is this? That you can compel resources, you can compel men that should be saved. Obedience is what made them to marvel. The moment you are truly obedient to the king, everything the king created must be obedience to you. Listen carefully. Your obedience, the, the, the authority and the dominion you command, is not just an arbitrary dominion is a is a reflection principle the degree to which you are loyal to the king you are surrendered to the king you are obedient to the king that is the same degree to which creation is compelled to be obedient to you when jesus came he so lavishly acknowledged the father even though he was equal with god he brought himself so low and acknowledged the father and attested to the fact that he could do nothing without the assistance and the leadership of the father. Now we see Jesus commanding the winds, commanding the waves. And the Bible says they obeyed him and the people marveled. We understand men obey you, but the wind and the sea, inanimate things, finances obeying you, the territory obeying you, the earth obeying you are we together the bible says they marveled and that should be your testimony that people will say we've employed people in this company but from the day we brought this person we cannot describe your technical skill is there but it looks like there is something else you have brought to this corporation the dimensions of favor wisdom is open doors Are we learning? Next scripture. In Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. Very simple and popular scripture, but I want us to read it together. Read it with conviction. Are you ready? One to read, please. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord had given me 
are for signs and wonders in Lagos, for signs and wonders in Nigeria. Hold on. For signs, mention the name of everywhere that you should be a sign and a wonder. For signs and wonders in the marketplace, signs and wonders in Europe, in America. It says, I and the children that the Lord hath given me, we are for signs and for wonders. Please look up. You know what a sign is? The assignment of a sign, a signboard was designed to captivate your attention no matter how distracted you are. So they designed a signboard intentionally. They use all of the psychology, all of light, every, there is usually heavy investment in signboards. So that no matter how distracted you are, it becomes too evident to ignore it. But a sign never points you to itself it tells you you are closer to the location when you are headed to a place and you see a sign it says turn left finally you know you are almost there the bible says we are for signs that means by my design something should rise from my life that creation should not ignore me this is not about being arrogant the excellency of the design that God invested his artistry in my making and that if I allow myself to be so constructed I will carry a formation that will compel nations and kings to bear witness to the fact that this is truly a sign I and the children that the Lord hath given me he says we are for signs and for wonders in Israel but I like the remaining part from who? from the Lord of hosts we are not just signs that appeared running our own agenda we were sent by the king as signs the woman at the well left not just receiving a miracle she ran and she became a sign let me show you how signs work this was a known prostitute six men in her life five men the six not even being her husband and after an encounter with jesus the bible says she left her water the issue of fetching water she ran to the city so she had the potential to do that but not without an encounter the bible says she told everyone without thinking what they would think about her come see a man her witness was so compelling the people had to leave their businesses and say this woman we know her where did this courage suddenly come from come see a man that had told me everything that i ever done they did not come because they loved jesus they came because the sign was a sign indeed and when they came to jesus they had an opportunity to sit down with him and to discuss with him and here was their verdict now we believe not just because of you we have seen for ourselves that is the assignment of a sign that when you come from a family that is known for practicing witchcraft that nobody rises beyond certain levels and my God the Lord lifts you by engaging the mysteries that you have taught and by accessing the kinds of graces that will fall upon you this night that you move in a speed that no one can explain in one year in two years you command a level of financial dominion territorial dominion where your life becomes a bible study manual that people can use your life to learn god and say we've not seen him in this fashion i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs now when a sign stops pointing to the real object it no longer becomes a sign you see that this is the reason why before he sends you he makes you because the tendency for pride in the midst of result is there and all humans who are not worked on by God will fall victim so he walks upon you so that your will becomes to glorify him and when he invests so much of his glory and while the world is clapping for you you are unashamed you can point them and say i am only a sign come and see the one who sent me john said i am the voice of one crying he was not ashamed 
John chapter 1 and verse 6 there was a man sent from God I like that rendition the Bible says his name was John there was a man sent from God his name was Joshua Selman there was a man a woman sent from God a businessman a businesswoman a politician a career person sent from God you only pass through the womb of your mother you were sent from God and the Bible says his name was John the assignment is in verse 7 the Bible says the same came for a witness that through the excellency of his witness men might believe do you believe all I've said so far so that we do not waste all the prayers and the impartation God is determined to make something out of you tonight that you have never been yet he's, he's, he's a kind is a version of you that is about to be unveiled but it is important for you to understand that in the midst of the glory and the glitz and the glamour remember my teaching he's only decorating the signboard so that you will attract the world indeed and bring them to the king King of my life, you are my own, and I live for you alone. King of my life, you have my own, and I lay my life for you. My heart is yours. My mind is yours, my will is yours, you're the king of my life. That is our creed in this kingdom, everything belongs to you. So when you lift us up, it's so that the world can see us clearer and then we draw them to you unashamedly and intentionally. We let them know that no man can do these things except God be with him. Listen, if you understand what I'm teaching you tonight, it's like you have officially signed the contract of being a sign and a wonder. It's not as if God cannot lift. I'm telling you, it's not as if God cannot bless. But most believers do not understand what it takes. You must have that orientation and that understanding. That everything that revolves in the kingdom especially as touching your rising is so that you become a mirror it's called in theology the reflection principle the moon does not have a light of itself it is the degree to which it aligns to the Sun that it shines so when you see the moon halfway that is not the true shape of the moon that is only the part of the moon that aligns to the Sun the part of you that aligns to God is a part that the world will see shining for some of you, the moon is so small. You have been so misrepresented because of your disalignment. There is something called full moon where the moon aligns perfectly and it can make nights to even become like evening. Are we together? So all this petty pride that is destroying our generation should not even rise you see humility is not just a character trait humility is a revelation is the resultant effect of understanding what I'm teaching you because you see pride is rebellion it means number one you do not even know the king number one you don't know yourself number three you don't know your assignment you alone are God and I surrender I surrender that when God lifts you whilst you are holding the billions of naira and all of the money the temptation is that everybody will look at you and say I think there's a language we use in night blow <laughs> no. that's too small a reason for God to invest his integrity upon your life the ad that kind of agenda is too is too small but when it becomes that the nations must see your glory now you are speaking the king's language 
when you come to him and say Lord invest upon me the healing anointing alright what's the purpose for the healing anointing Lord I come from a family where nobody has looked uh, people have looked down on me and I want to cure that shame too small a reason for God to invest that healing anointing but ladies and gentlemen when you get to a point where you say Lord I know that in this end time you desire your healing power to reach the nations can you find a worthy vessel in me that becomes an extension of your possibilities to the nation you are speaking the king's language I'm teaching you how to speak to the king for many years a woman wanted a child and the purpose of that child was simply to solve the mockery that was coming from her stepwife and you would think that because of that agenda God will respond it was not enough reason at all but the day she said Lord you are looking for a prophet I've changed my agenda I, I let's let's talk kingdom she prayed once and Samuel arrived let me tell you the truth lamentations out of pain and misery and kingdom driven prayers are two different things unfortunately most of us in the body of Christ invest hours praying the kind of prayer that is founded and garnished with selfishness and sometimes we make very nasty statements as if we forget that it's God we are talking to and we expect him to listen and then to answer All these prayers about mockery and the rest. Now, I'm not, I know that God will always prove a point in your life. But sincerely, I'm telling you how the king operates. If there is anything that drives your passion other than to see him glorified, forget about the investment of his power. Are we learning? Yes. Let me show you one more scripture. Jesus John 14 verse 12 I'm just charging your hearts and we'll pray John 14 12 here's what Jesus said verily verily I say unto you who is speaking now Jesus himself the truth so there is no lie in what you are hearing he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also <laughs> and he says greater works than this shall he do fill my life till all they see is you Lord glorify listen to what I'm saying that's a prayer fill my life till all they see is you Glorify for all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for. When I started ministry, I never knew there was something called honorarium that a man preaches and you can put a basket of fruits and say, thank you, go and eat. I never knew that there was such a thing because that was never the drive. It's an honor to serve his majesty. You see that? Seeing souls saved, seeing lives transformed, that was it. Thank you, oh God, that every other thing that came as a fringe blessing was a surprise. For doing this, for serving you with all my heart, this is what you are doing. And when God finds that kind of heart, he says, you are doing this for me. Let's go to the next level. I hope God is speaking to someone. So that before you receive all this impartation and start running out and then just go and kill yourself for no reason. God is, there is a circumcision that God is doing in our hearts. Let me tell you, many people have failed God. They have failed God because they did not learn kingdom. 
they did not learn kingdom when it has to do with kingdom your name decreases let every other name fade away that's the language of the kingdom let every other name fade away till there's only you let every other name fade away jesus take your place jesus take your place sing it one more time with conviction in your heart let every other name Dethrone all those idols that have risen above the name of the Christ. Bring in every thought to the obedience of Christ. Jesus That's how it works in this kingdom there cannot be two kings in the same kingdom that's why he took us to this side of his kingdom he is the king of we kings here listen look at me the king understood this Darius and he made them to build a statue of himself 90 feet tall and he says there's only one king in babylon if you hear the sound of the trumpet no matter who you are relinquish all your earthly duties you become a worshiper immediately and anyone who fails to worship you are a rebel i don't care how excellent your administrative skills are when it has to do with the issue of the king i don't want to know if you are the chief financier of babylon you must bow and there were four hebrew boys who said king we respect you but there is you don't know who sent us there is a conflict of dominion when it has to do with administration we will respect you when it has to do with our civil duties but as far as our allegiance is concerned your statue came too late there is a king he says our god would deliver us and the king watched and said this boys oh king we are not careful we are sent we respect you but there is a government that we have pledged our allegiance and there will be no negotiation and they they, they made the, the fiery furnace seven times to the extent the Bible records that those who threw them there were burned by the fire and they took them watch the jealousy of the king as soon as they arrived because the Bible says where two or three are gathered even if it's in fire provided two or three are gathered I am there in their midst gathered in the challenge gathered in church gathered in pain where two or three are gathered doesn't matter the location if it is in my name I will come and defend my name hallelujah and the king said were there not four men I hope you know that the, the fourth man would have been invisible but he became visible because there was a message to prove that just because you see me standing alone does not mean I am alone just because you are doing business alone does not mean you are alone and when occasion demands the one with you who stands by you like a mighty terrible one he reveals himself to the world they will see the difference between you and him they will know you are not alone hallelujah no you are not alone you are not doing business alone you are not in the office alone it looks like you are walking alone they see you alone but you are jealously guarded you were sent by the king you are an ambassador beyond an employee carry that mentality if i ask you who do you work for your first question is one bank or whatever and you are right but from an eternal standpoint you are very wrong hmm. the one who sent me ever before me before the bank saw you they only saw you because he sent you the corporation only saw you because he sent you 
they have discerned your value before he sent you so when they say go and you go back and cry and say i am finished you insulted the one who originally sent you someone shout send, send. one more time say send. send it's a mentality you must carry you may look ordinary but you were sent from god oh your parents said they finished giving birth it just happens that you came no god forced you there because there, there's an agenda that still had your name on it you see when you carry this mentality your orientation on many grounds begin to change your concept of rewards your concept of men your concept of love every your approach you live on earth like a foreigner even though you have tremendous influence over the people and the resources but there is something about your mind they know that your relationship is not connected to anything here because you are sent no matter how long the ambassador of us is in nigeria he knows us is not his home yet you will see him driving convoys yet you will see him staying in the best of hotels but he is eternally aware that i'm a u.s citizen first sent on a mission they name their mission after what sends them and notice what happened we had an incident recently i was told somewhere in the eastern part of the nation where you know there was an assault or so on u.s citizens and within moments the secretary of state had made a speech that is kingdom who is touching the one i sent and they say there's somebody he, he has touched everybody in that family like that and then god gives you a scripture to announce to that devil but i know whom i believed listen and i am persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed to him not keep that which is available when you become that which is committed to him his jealousy now comes in place to defend you all that you have given me he says i have kept john 17 and none is lost except the son of partition and that that scripture might be fulfilled he's a keeper not just a maker so when he makes your business he keeps it so you can have longevity of impact there's no need to be afraid will i last 10 years no if you know the one who keeps you and your loyalty and your obedience and your surrenderedness is in check the dust will rise and fall you will still stand are we together so when god begins to use you listen carefully we're about to pray now when god begins to use you and announce you in various dimensions to the nations ladies and gentlemen you must have it at the back of your mind that you are not there for yourself every time pride begins to come fight it like you are fighting sin fight it like you are fighting the devil because it is a cancer that can destroy god fights anything that fights him even if he's the one that gave you i hope you know god can give you something he will later fight <laughs> just because he gave you the moment it becomes an enemy to his program even if it is you he will get you out of the way is it in your bible that there are people god resists is it in your bible who resists them that god himself can resist men talk more of things it is not every loss that is demonic there are some losses that have come because you have used it to become an enemy to God's program. He does not resist it because it's his character to deplete. Anything that stands the way of his program, even Jesus, when he became sin, the father turned his face from him. Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani, Father, me and you again? He said, no, this is not Jesus on the cross. This is a compendium of all men, an embodiment of sin. And he turned his face. I hope you know that God himself submits to the integrity of his word that he has exalted his word even above his reputation the word name there is his reputation God is touched by the feelings of your infirmity but he's only moved by his word touched with the feelings of your infirmity but moved by his word so just because you are crying does not guarantee that God will move. Even as God, there is a modus operandi that governs his activity. The word. 
in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he says the same was in the beginning with God verse 3 says all things were made by him and without him that means outside of him was not anything made that was made that's John 1 1 and 3 without him outside of his influence was not anything made hallelujah this is what gives us the confidence to do the things that we do this is what gives us the confidence. This is what gives your man the confidence to know that 10 years from now, Calvary Bible Church will only be going from glory to glory. Why? Because there is a scriptural guarantee that if it is true that you are the just, it says your path should be as the shining light that shineth ever brighter, Satan notwithstanding, unto the perfect day. When that scripture was written, God was aware that Satan was on earth and the scripture was still written. Are we together now? Yes. There is no challenge that you are going through tonight that is new under the sun. There's none of us here who went through Job's kind of tragedy. Yet the Bible testifies that at the end of it, the latter end of Job's life was even greater than the former. In Job 42 and verse 10, the Bible says the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And then the Bible even tells us how it happens. It says that he gave Job twice as much as he had. The secret is found in verse 11. It says many of his acquaintances, his brethren, the people who left him before, they came and they ate bread with him in his house they bemoaned him and comforted him of all the calamities that had befallen him and the bible said every man gave him a piece of money so every man can give it just depends on who directs them the bible says every man plus the stingy relatives that man was crippled and they did not attend to him but when the king said give him i'm praying for someone in the name of jesus may the king ordain an instruction on earth for your rising may the king compel men to give the bible says every man gave sit down apostle you don't know how greedy my uncle is i respect your saying but it's because you do not know that there is a name god is called the father of spirits that every spirit submits to him when god compels a man to bless pharaoh as hardened as pharaoh was he was the one who gave favor to the Egyptian, to the Israelites. To the point that when they had left, it was like a charm. Something came over him and he said, what did I do? I gave the gold of Egypt, pursue them. An influence can come upon men and compel them to bless and favor you regardless. Look at that scripture. Let me show you how God restored Job. Every man I read this scripture many years ago and I cried. I said, so every man can give. Don't let anybody tell you, me, God forbid, I will not attend to you. Respect them and leave them. Go back to the king who sent you and said, king, you had the arrogance of your creation. And the king will say, leave me and them. Hmm. This king, this mysterious king, all powerful he's called. Every man gave unto him let's finish that scripture every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold how many of them my question is were they not there from a logical standpoint at his time of pain and that time which was the best time to help him so don't blame somebody for forgetting you it depends on what is on your head and it depends on the verdict that was passed over you it says thou anointest my head with oil not my cup you anoint my head but i can know what is on my head by looking at my cup if your cup is empty stop blaming the business it's not the business the business is a report card that there is something you are not carrying or not carrying enough till there's only you let every other name fade away jesus take your place listen when you when you believe what i'm teaching you you will live a humble life but nobody on earth will bully you because everybody was created 
this emotional bully that goes on from nation to nation looking down on people by reason of whatever it is all that is absolute nonsense when you are indoctrinated and intoxicated with the extent of the love of the king for you I may have said it in this church if God says he's blessing 10 people I'll start praying for the remaining nine because one spot is gone already at the point he said it one spot is already booked that is how much he loves me do you believe this this is not a preacher's sermon you can't fake these kinds of things for a long time one day to become clear that you are talking nonsense believers why are we here tonight number one to experience the power of God the supernatural power that is invested in this kingdom we belong to a glorious kingdom we belong to a kingdom that is higher than the realm of science so don't ask how the growth disappeared you only know what you were taught in school but there are other dimensions higher than the <laughs> witchcraft in Africa should help us believe God easier because witchcraft has is a realm that is higher than the three-dimensional realm and people have seen a semblance you know in in Africa in marketplaces there are people I don't know if it happens here but there are many markets where people play with hyenas they play with swords that don't cut them these are manipulations of spiritual laws I'm not exalting witchcraft I'm just saying that possibility should already charge you to know that if this can happen look at what you know the level of technology right now is opening us up to dimensions all kinds of things and the king sits upon his throne and says i will make you the head and not the tail and you are there cracking your little mind saying how you put your little statistics the y the x and say lord it does not add up and he says take it away my thoughts are not your thoughts my ways are not your ways for as high and far apart as the heaven is yours is to believe him to believe him even through wisdom and say lord i may not understand the bible says just like you do not know how the bones of her who is with child are formed or the way of the wind so you do not know the ways of god that means the dynamics of how god manifests things god can say by tomorrow you are a millionaire and you say lord i do not believe this ask the land of samaria and ask the arrogance of the man upon whom the king leaned he said even if god will open the windows of heaven might this happen and i'm sure the king saying the windows of heaven do you know what happened the last time the windows of heaven were opened ladies and gentlemen it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom and all the blessings that come with that kingdom because the king is also your father comes from the word Abba the word Abba means your source your sustainer your protector your defender that means everything that plagues you becomes a concern to him so the Bible says to come boldly before the throne you are coming to meet a king except that it is a throne of grace not just a throne of justice it is a throne of grace so that in spite of your inadequacies you still have access to the king hallelujah this is the mentality I carry when I pray for the sick and minister and all the things that God does through my life, listen, this is all of me. You are intelligent. Look at me and look at the result. You know there's a missing part of the equation. <laughs> that missing part, only his size can feel. One plus Jesus is equal to the answer he puts there. Any answer he puts is right. One plus one is two, mathematically. Are we together? One plus one plus one is three. But one plus, even if he's zero plus Jesus, doesn't matter what came. The moment you add him, there is no equal to. Is the answer he puts there. Hmm. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? One more time, I want you to sing it with me. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? 
Jesus. I like this part says, You're the name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change? for and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching